Hello everyone and welcome to another SB Links video. Today we have a new subject to talk about. So before we get over to the lot and see what's going on with the boat build, we're going to talk about a touchy subject and that is helm positions and the pros and cons for the different positions. There are a whole bunch of these different helm positions. In fact, when we uh, started looking into doing this uh, segment of the video so that we could talk about why we chose our helm position, and I started to make a list of the various helm positions I've seen, I didn't even realize just how many there were. So we're gonna go over 19 different helm positions and uh, there might be more, but those are the 19 that, that I have seen. And we'll talk about um, what they are. And then we're going to do a little bit of a different thing here. If you recall on our monohull versus catamaran video, which I'll put a link to up here, we made up a spreadsheet that allowed you to value each of the uh, pros and cons. And in this particular one, we're gonna do something similar to that. We're gonna list all of the positive possible things on all of these. And then you can decide what value each of those things has to you personally. And at the end, the spreadsheet will then kick out which helm position you would prefer. And there isn't an incorrect helm position. There isn't a best helm position. There is a best helm position for you though. Yep, there, I would choose something different probably than Phil. <laughs> That's very true. So, well, we'll see. Maybe we'll let, uh, we'll let the Admiral here uh, make her own list and I'll make mine and we'll see if we come up with the same one or not. So let's start by talking about all of the, just briefly, yes. <laughs> all of the different helm positions. The very first one is very simple and goes back to the beginnings of boats and this is just a tiller. That's just an arm connected directly to the steering and in a catamaran case there would be one on each side back on the sugar scoop and you would turn the boat by sitting back there and moving that tiller back and forth. In fact the very first sailboat that I sailed across the North Sea in Germany was a tiller boat. We didn't have a wheel and so it was all by tiller. So here's a picture of me when I was a little brat sailing out there. So uh, let's start up by uh, going on to the next one now of the helm positions. So. And let me check my list. Uh, stern fixed wheels. What these are is uh, they're very similar to the two tillers that we just talked about. They'd be on the stern back at the sugar scoop and instead of a tiller there's a wheel back there and you can steer from either side of the boat and um, just uh, turn them. There may be a seat, yeah. there may not. Sometimes uh, they just have a standing room for it, and sometimes they have a permanent seat, and sometimes they have a drop-down drop seat. Yeah. yeah. The <clears throat> next one is stern dual position wheels. Now, stern dual position wheels are only slightly different in that the wheels aren't fixed in position. They're on an arm that can tilt and go in. And what that allows you to do is tilt them out when you want to look down the side of the boat and be out there in the elements, or tilt them inwards and maybe have a seat toward more in the center. You have a little bit more protection from the elements, and now you're looking through the salon to view. Number four is stern, centered, raised helm. Right, in this case, there's gonna be um, some kind of ladder or, or such that gets you up, or a platform that you can step up on and that's gonna put your head above the cockpit roof and you're gonna look from the back of the boat forward. Uh, I haven't seen this one very often, but there are a few out there. Some old Crowther boats that I've seen had this set, set up. And the next is? Next is cockpit forward dual wheels. Instead of back on the stern, these wheels are moved forward, but still in the cockpit and slightly inboard, uh, not out in the side of the boat. And you're going to be you can get out to the edge of these and sometimes look down the side a little, um, or you're going to look through the cockpit window that's between, between the salon and you and the salon window. So you're looking through two, two sets of windows, although they often have it so that the cockpit window can open. So now you're only looking through the salon windows forward up there. Okay, next is single bulkhead offset. 
Bulkhead. So the bulkhead is between the salon and the cockpit, and now the wheel is pushed up against the bulkhead itself. And you're usually on a seat that just raises your head a little bit above the cockpit roof so that you can see forward from there. Uh, if there's a hard top, there doesn't have to be. Um, your head's between the low hard top and the top of the cockpit roof. And to follow up on that, there's now dual bulkhead offset. Right. Same thing. It's just that Same we have thing. dual wheels. And so, so that way you can be looking at the sail trim from either side, depending on which side of the boat the sails are currently on. Yeah. Then there's centered bulkhead. Right. So you're dead center in the boat uh, again. And this is like the stern one where you're dead center. That now you're just up against the bulkhead. And in this case, there's only one wheel. So you don't have to have dual. And the idea here is that you're in the very, very center of the boat, and so you get you know, a fairly decent view of, of uh, all four corners, although being that low down, you might not be able to see the bows completely. Now we have dual outboard hull deck steering. That one has to do with a few boats that actually put the steering out of the cockpit completely onto the side deck, mm -hmm. and you're sitting right on the side deck and there's uh, it's dual, so there's a steering on either side of the boat. Okay, semi-raised bulkhead offset. Okay, in a semi-raised version of a helm position, instead of the bulkhead having just your head above the cockpit roof, the seat is raised higher, yeah. and now you're head and shoulders above the cockpit roof. And what that does for you, it gives you a little better view of the forward bow of the boat, so you can hopefully see those now, so that you have just a slightly better view all the way around uh, on the boat. I, I think this is one that you kind of like. It is. There's some modifications to that that I like, but getting closer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Semi-raised bulkhead or cockpit offset dual position. All right, well, in this particular case, we have a bulkhead uh, semi-raised position, but like a, an earlier version that was back on the stern, the wheel is mounted on an arm that can drop down, and now you can leave that semi-raised position, for example, if the weather's poor, and you can go down and steer from inside the cockpit where you're completely protected from the weather. So the wheel itself pivots up to a raised position or down to a low position. So the sort of the best of both worlds. True. And we want to give credit. Uh, we believe that this was first introduced by balance catamarans. Yeah, they called it the Versa Helm. And, uh, and it, it, it sort of speaks for itself. It's versatile. Yes, it's versatile. And, and so now many other designers use this as well. Yeah, it's been picked up by other designers and used on quite a few different boats. Yeah. What's the next one? Next one is dual semi-raised bulkhead. Okay, this one's just pretty simple. We have a semi-raised position but on both sides of the boat. And yet the steering is up against the bulkhead still. Uh, an example of that, there's some HH boats like the 55 that have uh, dual bulkhead semi-raised position helms. What's really nice is, of course, you get to have the sails uh, on one side and you're steering on the other. And if you go about, you can switch to the other side so you're not blocked by the sails. We're on to semi-raised split helm and line handling. Okay, so this is one of the ones that I like a lot. and. It's the same as the bulkhead semi-raised, so your head and shoulders are above the cockpit, but we move the steering back, and usually there's a uh, pedestal that's put to hold the wheel. And the helmsman can sit back there and still get that semi-raised position with the good views all the way around and such. But there's a space in front of the helm where the line handling is all dealt with, and now you can have a separate person handling the lines from the person who's steering the boat. And so uh, we like that because you can work both. However, there are times when you are single-handing, and that's of course easy enough on that. You just push the autopilot. Uh, if you're the helmsman, step one step forward, do all the line handling you want to do, and then step back to the wheel and take it back off of autopilot, or leave it on there, whichever way you want. Then we have a variation on that, which is semi-raised, split helm, and line handling with dual engine controls. This is exactly the setup that we have on SV Links. Because one of the problems with the single uh, steering position on one side of the boat is it's great for docking 
along that one side, but you have no good view of the other side at all. And so you always want to try to dock on that one side of the boat. But there are situations, of course, where that's just not possible and you have to come in on the other side. And rather than try to use a camera, which doesn't have very good 3D perception, or a person yelling instructions to you how close you're getting to the dock, you can put a set of throttles on the other side of the boat and you don't need a wheel because uh, coming in, you can just use the throttles and bring yourself right up to the dock. And that way you can be looking right down the side of the boat. You can see the bow and, and, and the stern easily and bring it right up. And if you're, of course, on docking on the other side, you're already on that side, so you can do the same thing. So you get the best of both worlds for docking in that case. Okay, dual, semi-raised, split helm and line handling. Well, this is just a even more complex version of what uh, the single version I just mentioned does. It's just it has a wheel over on the other side as well, a full helm position, and it would be uh, still set back with two line handling positions. Um, I don't actually know of a single boat that I can recall that has this setup, but um, we put it in there because it's certainly possible. Okay, now we got a simple one, flybridge. Flybridge means that you're steering from up on top of the cockpit roof. You're no longer raised or semi-raised or any of that. You have climbed up on top of the cockpit, there's seating on top of the cockpit, and you are up high and you can see wonderfully with this, but you are also at a much higher center of gravity and that tends to move the boom up. So you have to do take those into account. And of course, you're kind of separated from the social aspects of being down towards the cockpit where you can chat with people who are down there. But uh, it does have its, uh, its advantages as well. Okay, salon forward helm. In this case, the helm's in the salon. And I don't see this very often, but there are a couple different boats out there that have it. And usually the mast is coming down through the cockpit roof and the lines come right down and the winches and everything are inside the salon, often in the galley area, which is right in the center of it all. You can also be slightly forward of that, but it's literally inside the salon and you look through the salon uh, windows to steer. Salon forward helm with forward cockpit for line handling. Similar, but what you have is the wheel inside the salon, but there's a single or double door that leads out to a forward cockpit where the mast is and all the line handling is right out there. So you can steer and all your electronics are inside and you're well protected there. But if you need to adjust the sails, you go through that forward door outside to the mast area and make adjustments to the sails. Gunboats are done this way, for example. And last, we have forward cockpit helm. This would mean there's no wheel inside the salon and it is all out in the forward cockpit. The wheel's out there, the line handling's out there, everything's there. So the beauty is that uh, you have everything at your fingertips and you have an incredible view forward of the boat. Not so good toward the stern though for when you're docking, but you have a beautiful view while you're sailing. You can look up and see the sails and everything. Of course, you are completely out in the elements, so you have to take that into account as well. So those are the various types of helm positions that are possible. Now that we've gone over all the types of helm positions, let's go check out the build site. And when we get back, we'll take a look at what all the benefits of each different helm position is. But first, let's go to the build site. Okay. First thing this morning, we did a little bit of organizing in this container. Um, it was so narrow to walk through, so we've gotten a lot of the other bigger pieces out right now that we're doing some work on. So we were able to scoot everything over more towards the side, give us more room to walk in here. And then later on this year, we'll be getting more of these pieces out of here as we construct more of the larger parts of the boat. So then we'll have more room in this container to set up uh, racking for tool organization and um, stuff like that. This morning we're working on dry fitting the cedar strips on the top of the forebeam. And this is just continuing what we've already put on. These are the boards that we have epoxied up yesterday. And so now we can get them screwed on. We'll unlikely finish the entire thing today because when we get down towards the end we're going to have to uh, try to put in another of the uh, 
existing boards. And if that doesn't work out, we'll have to go buy another piece of lumber to fix that. And of course, we have to custom cut the last strip in so that it fits perfectly. And so we'll get to that on the following day. But today, we're gonna to screw down the cedar strips that we have already prepared. The top of the four beam is nearly there. We're down to the ultimate board, the last board. The problem is, is that uh, we tried to use one of the old boards because we ran short on lumber here. And uh, this time we cut the uh, scarf joints the other direction as some other uh, viewers have suggested. And uh, as soon as we put it up here, it snapped again. So uh, we went off to another lumber store, found another piece of uh, 12 foot cedar. And we're gonna go ahead and put that through the table saw and get it set up. And we'll go back to putting just the one joint right here. And that way uh, we know it won't break because all of these are full length and none of these ever have a problem. So uh, we tried it again and now we're off to another board. This is the one we're gonna have to rip right now. Kind of narrow it up, and cut it in two pieces and put a scarf in the middle. So what we're doing right now, we, we, we cut these to three quarters of an inch for our next board, but we need to shave these things down to the same uh, millimeter width that the original boards came with. Now we're working on bulkhead number four in the boat, which you can see is where it is. And uh, when we first looked at it, it looked like a simple shape, but what we found is there are these appendages here, which we have to attach here. So we'll have to put biscuits in there and then we have to run rope around the inside, around the whole thing and around the whole top down. And there's another one of these on the far side. So this uh, little bulkhead number four turned out to be a little bit more work than we thought, but at least it's the last of the bulkheads that we have to put rope into. So uh, we've already routed out all of the edges everywhere that we're gonna to have to put the rope into. We did that before lunch and now we just had lunch. So now we're gonna get out the epoxy and we're gonna start putting rope in. It's uh, early on Wednesday morning. Yesterday, Tuesday was an American holiday so we can't work on holidays, whether we want to or not. Uh, it's just part of the rules of the city. So that gave the uh, things we worked on on Monday a good chance to set up. So we have our joint here that we did. So that looks good. Another one down there. And so this one will be ready to do the final ropes on it today. We've got to do this full, oh, about 26 foot length all the way down. And then we've got to come around here as well. We already did the rope on this side, so just these two around the ends and that long one that goes all the way down. Well, bulkhead number four, we've got the rope in through this entire edge now all the way around. And we've let it set up enough that we can flip it over so we can work on the other side. So we're just going to flip this right now. Between the biscuit we already put in between the two pieces and the rope and thickened epoxy on top of it, it makes that joint already strong enough to have no problem with us flipping it over. But it'll become even stronger when we put this very, very thick rope on this side. Okay, so. Now we've got this entire, you can call it 27 feet or so that we've got to put in all the way across here. But that will really strengthen up this biscuit that we put in right here. Uh, 
And it also has rope going through here connecting these two pieces, but, it, but when we put even a thicker rope through here, it should make this pretty solid at that point. You've seen us uh, put rope in in the other earlier videos, so I didn't want to put you through this one, but this is about 27 feet or so. One long rope goes all the way down to here. Uh, that's the longest rope on any of the bulkheads. And it's just done now. This is all still wet. And uh, we'll let this uh, set up for tomorrow sanding. But uh, that's the last bulkhead, number four. And it's done as far as putting all the rope in. Got all done today. And so sanding tomorrow, and we'll be done with the bulkheads ready to go between the hulls. Which of course means we need two hulls. So it's time to take off all of the top planks on our four beam because we have the whole thing done in a dry fitting. So we're pulling off the first four or five boards here and we'll epoxy them on. The rest can hold the forms in place while we epoxy these other boards on and then we'll, when those are holding the forms in place, we'll pull some more. So right now we're just extracting screws And then we'll get to some epoxy, our favorite stuff. Gooey, sticky, gets on everything, falls on your feet, epoxy. Now we've decided to leave the actual first board over here on. There's no real reason to pull it, but we do want to get some tape down so that uh, when we epoxy these others on, there's no chance of these boards sticking down to the uh, side of this edge or uh, we also have to put tape across each one of those forms to go across so that they don't stick there either so once these are off we will do some tape we have started the epoxy work on the top here so you can see that we've got the first three boards on and uh, tomorrow we'll get the next three or four probably take us oh I don't know four days to uh, completely epoxy the four beam so uh, no big deal, but it's important that that thing gets off of those pads in the next few weeks because we need to be able to take that hull and flip it over onto the pads. And so once we get the laminating epoxy, which is now according to the shipping uh, uh, form that I just received, comes in on the 10th. Today is the 6th, so four more days. And then we'll pick it up and we'll get to work on this as soon as we can as far as getting the basalt on there. We're looking forward to getting that and, and then uh, the hard job of putting the fairing compound over the whole thing and sanding it. We just want to get that hull done so we can get to work on the starboard hull. And that brings us to this, which is sanding the patches that we've done to the hull yesterday. And what we're doing now is we're doing it in sections now. So you can see this blue tape here and here. What we're doing is that we're, we're working on this section only and we're gonna make sure that it is 100% done so we never have to come back and work on it again. And this particular section and this nose of the boat up here are two of the three most difficult parts. And that's because of the way the boat, the, the strips come in. And if you look down the side of the hull here, you can see that they're coming in at about a 45 degree. And then as they go, they're twisting down to vertical. And so with all of that twist that goes through this section, it made for a lot of hard edges of the planks. And so we had to sand those and that takes a lot more repair work. So this whole section up here is, is like that. But once we get back here, the boards are running straight. So if you look down here, these are all just in parallel going down the hall. And so these require a lot less work. These are pretty good as they are right now. There were a few fixes we've done in some of the seams, but uh, overall, this whole thing is gonna be good until we get to the third section that's difficult, which is at the stern of the boat. And this isn't as bad as the bow, because if you look here, you can see that these pieces from here, right here, all the way across, are coming in flat. And so there's no twist to any of these, so these were really easy to get right. But starting right here, you have the opposite. 
we have a severe twist. And I mean severe as in this is almost level. And then as it comes to here, by here you get to almost perfectly vertical. And so this section here goes through a very hard twist. And so that's why you see so much compound right through this area where we're getting this nice and smooth. It's really pretty good right now. We just have a few fixes left to go. So the only other uh, areas that have any kind of uh, real fixing is where these knife edges come in and end right there. So you can see we had to do some fixes right at that spot right there. But most of it is uh, all good now. So we're going to go section by section and get it 100%. So we already did this one yesterday. So we're going to start sanding this one right now. Um, and I'll probably have Brian start on that sanding on that. And then I'll go over to the, this side of the boat and sort of do the same thing in the first section here and try to get it at 100%. So we're trying to get down to the last of it because our sickleman's arriving tomorrow. And I've seen the ship here. Here's an image of where it's at right now. Anyway, so uh, it's arriving tomorrow and we'll pick it up in two days after that or so. And we want to get to putting the basalt on. So uh, this has to be 100% done. So uh, we've got about two, three days of work here to get it finished and we're going to do that. Good day. So we're back to working on the four beam again. This time we're getting the next board here epoxied on. So you can see there's a whole slew of clamps here trying to keep these things tight because we want these to come in like this over here, you know, nice and snug in the middle. And uh, the screws hold them down here, but in the middle they keep bowing out different ways. So we're clamping them down on every single middle section here. And uh, that should hold them pretty well. And there's a little bit of slop on there, but that's okay. That'll all sand off easy enough. You also see a, a bit of a gap here that we're filling with thickened epoxy. And the reason for that is that this is a much deeper part of the bend. And so the bottoms of these two boards are actually touching and so that this is sort of a pie shape and you're seeing the top section there and that'll all sand down just fine. So now that we've got that part done, we'll let that one set up and then we'll get another one of those on a little later. As you can see, we've made a lot of progress over at the build site, but now let's talk about the benefits of each helm site position. We're going to go into a list of all the positive things about helm positions. Notice we're not going to go negatives. It's implied negatives uh, because it's simply that these are the good things about each of the helm positions. You decide how important those things are by setting a value on them. And as you can see here in this spreadsheet, you get to decide the value and in the spreadsheet on the left column it shows you all these 19 helm positions that we talked about and along the top are all the positive things that are possible and you get to see which of these are in each one the little check mark for those and so once you put a value on each of the things along the top there it'll kick out the answer for you as to which helm position is best for you or at least the one that you like the most because you give the most value to the things it has as positive things. So uh, let's just take a look at a little bit of that spreadsheet and um, we'll go over these uh, different positive things that are possible to have in any of these helm positions, although none of them have all of them. <laughs> all right, what's number one? Number one is the joy of sailing. <laughs> that sounds like an odd thing, but you are a sailor and some People want to feel the wind in their face and be out there and, and uh, feel the, just the 
sensation of steering. And as a simple example, that's what those tillers are great for. You're out there, you're looking down them, the wind's hitting you in the face, you feel the direct feedback of the boat on the tiller, the joy of sailing. And so it's, uh, it is a, an aspect of a helm that's important to some people. Yep. Number two is view down the side decks. This one has to do with being able to see down the side of the boat while you're sailing and uh, get a good view of everything forward because the sails will be on the other side and you're looking straight down the side deck. Number three is good view to trim the main. So from your helm position, can you just look up and see the main so that you can look at the telltales and trim it properly. Some helm positions have a better views of the main than others. And number four is good view to trim the head sail. Same thing, except what's your view of the head sail? And so for trimming and some positions are, have a great view of it. Yep. Number five is a good view for docking on either side of the boat. Yeah, it's a little different than just the, your view while sailing. This is so that you can see this side of the boat as you're coming up to a dock. And so some positions allow you to have the steering route there where you can see as you're docking. And some of them have one side, some have both sides. So uh, it, it has a bearing upon how easy it is to come up to a dock. Number six is good view of stern corners. Yeah, when you're coming into a dock, something like 80, 90% of the time, you're probably going to come in stern first with a catamaran. And in that case, it's really nice to be able to see those stern quarters from where your steering and helm position is. So that can be an important thing to some people. Number seven is a good view of bow and stern on, dock, on the docking side of the boat. In this case, it's not just seeing the stern, although that, as we mentioned a moment ago, is the most important part there. Still, there are times when you might come in uh, bow first, and there are also times when you're just going to swing the bow over. So it's nice to be able to see both the stern and the bow. And so that may be important to you as well. Number eight is a fun one. Steer with your feet or hands. <laughs> yeah. In this case, if your wheel is large enough and, you, and you're seated, you can use your feet to steer the boat, or you can use your hands to steer, and there's just nice times when it's comfortable to just put your foot down there and steer. But there are some helm positions where that's not quite as easy as others, or even possible. <laughs> Correct. Number nine is high on my positive list of some protection from the elements. Some protection doesn't mean complete protection. And yeah. some protection just means that uh, you're a little bit out of the sun if you want to be, and if you're a vertical rain, you can be out of that as well. But if there's splashes coming from the side or wind bringing the water in from the side, uh, you're not completely protected, but you are, you know, somewhat. Somewhat, yeah. Okay, number 11 is somewhat socially connected to the cockpit. What somewhat socially connected is is simply that you uh, you're not sitting with the people in there, but you can talk to them and be part of the conversation. Yeah. So it's, you're, you're, you're somewhat connected there. Number 12 is also good for some of us who are financially uh, challenged. It is less expensive. Right. Um, this usually has to do with single versus dual helm positions. Because if you have to duplicate all the electronics, uh, steering and all that stuff, it's just far more expensive to install. And so if you're on a budget of some kind, then a single position might be better for you. Okay, the next one is completely protected from the elements. Yeah, if you don't want to get any <laughs> splash of salt water onto you or just cold wind or um, sun on you at all, then you want to be completely protected. And there are some helm positions that you are completely out of the elements. And to go along with that, completely socially connected with the cockpit. <laughs> Which means you are right down there with the other crew and can be part of whatever's going on even though you're at the helm. Next, we have better vision through the salon. Right, so in this case, by looking through the entire salon, you get a little bit more of a panorama view of what's in front of the boat, or some positions, you're only getting a side view, so. Next, we have a great one. 360 degree view. 
Yeah, in this case, there's nothing blocking your view, no matter which way you look for your surroundings. So for watching for approaching boats or just enjoying the view or whatever it might be, but you can look and see all the way around the boat. Then there's also high view of the surroundings. Yeah, this just means that you're higher up, giving you even a better and further view out of the surroundings. So there's a differentiating there between, for example, bulkhead, semi-raised, and um, flybridge, which you're getting higher and higher in each of those cases. Another one is low boom. Right. In this case, you're keeping the boom lower down, and that lowers your center of effort on the sail, which is better. It just makes for a better performing boat to have the boom down lower rather than a, a raised. Also, it's just access to the boom for if you've got to zip up the sail or you've got some problem with a reefing line or whatever it might be and you need to get to the boom. If it's lower down, that's just easier to deal with. And that leads us to lowest boom. Right. So now we're just differentiating between uh, a low boom, which is, has all those things about access that I talked about. But if you have the lowest possible, where it's barely off the top of the cockpit, you're going to have the best performance. Okay. Now we have easy and quick line handling from the helm. Right. Are all of the lines led back to the helm? Or do you have to go somewhere else in the boat for certain things? And the helm positions that have all the lines left back to the helm might be something that you prefer. Okay, now we have good view of the bows. The reason we differentiate good views of the bow versus just good views of all fours, you may have a helm position that gives you good views of the bow but not the stern. And if that's something that you prefer, uh, then that's fine. And so we had to make it a separate item. Okay, here's another positive. Lines and winches are kept out of the interior of the boat. <laughs> well, <laughs> as far as you're concerned. Uh, some people might like having everything in the inside where it's completely protected out of the elements. No matter what you're doing in line handling, you're not going outside at all. And other people might not prefer that because you have, you know, wet and smelly ropes inside your yeah. salon. So it's up to you whether you think that's a, a positive that you would want. Okay, here's one that is totally for me. Somewhat centered vertically, so less pendulum pitching as the boat rocks. So. You know, a boat is a bit of a pendulum, and if you think about down here at the low part, it is moving. The higher you are up, the more movement there is. So the higher the helm gets, the more pendulum effect you're going to feel in it. So uh, helm positions that are low down and particularly centered will have the least amount of motion for while you're sitting at the helm. And that leads us to very low position vertically for less pendulum pitching as right. the boat rocks. Same thing, it's just we're talking about the absolute lowest and perfectly centered position. Okay, and this is for the social person, uh, large enough for others to sit and join the helmsman. Yeah, some helms are really only for one or maybe two people, uh, and then there's other ones where there could be three or more people up in the helm or at the helm if it's not up. So it's up to you how much of a social area do you want your helm to be versus just a place to steer the boat or, or handle the lines. And here's another positive that's good for both of us, protection from the sun. Yeah, um, there's protection from, you know, the elements that we talked about, but there's some helm positions that do have protection from the sun, but not protection from any other... Wind and spray. Right. And so that's why this is a separate category. It's just protection from the sun. Yep. If that's all you need, then this is the positive you would value. Okay, now we have safe access without going onto the side decks. Right, so can you get to your helm and without exposing yourself when the weather is very terrible by having to walk down a side deck? And so if that's important to you, then you want to choose a helm position that uh, allows you to have access to it without having to get out on those side decks. Yep. And then there's easy access to the side decks. Yes, the opposite, where you're at the helm and you need to go forward to get to line handling or you're coming up to a dock or you want to go forward to something to do with uh, raising your spinnaker or you need to get to the stern of the boat quickly. And how fast can you go from where that helm position is to these different places on the boat by going up and down the side deck? And a similar one to that is easy access forward. Right. So... In this case, 
how fast can you get all the way forward on the boat from your helm position? Then they, you want a helm position that has that quick, easy access, and that would be something like a forward cockpit, possibly, where you can just go straight up and straight out. How about separate line handling and wheel positions? Yeah, I kind of mentioned this one when we were talking about the different types of place uh, of helm positions, but the idea here is that if you have a crewman who can be handling the lines while the other one is handling the steering, that divides up the tasks and allows a little bit smoother operation that way. So if that's important to you, then you'll want those split positions of helm and line handling. Here's an important one. All lines lead to the helm. Yeah, and you know, there's going to be cases where certain helm positions can have every single line run straight to the helm, so you never have to go anywhere to handle the sails and, and such, where other ones, there are more than one position that you have to move to in the boat in order to uh, adjust the sails. And the last two are similar. Uh, second to the last, we have less space taken up in the cockpit. Yeah, I mean, if your helm is in the cockpit in some fashion, then it's taking up space. And you can have certain helm positions that are completely outside the cockpit, leaving more space for socializing areas and room in the cockpit. And lastly, we have less space taken up in the salon. Right, and same thing. If your helm is not taking up space in your salon because it's out in the cockpit or up uh, on the side decks or wherever, then your salon just has more space in it for the galley and other things. So again, these are just space issues, but uh, if they're important to you, then you're gonna wanna have your helm somewhere else. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, that's the list. And so at this point, uh, we'll make this spreadsheet available to you. You can download it at the link we'll put at the bottom. And then you can just value uh, each of the Pilots. categories there. Yeah. And it'll kick out your answer as to which helm positions is the one you seem to prefer. So based on this. Now, if there's any uh, other advantages and disadvantages we left out, we apologize. These are the ones we could think of. And we just thought we'd give you a, a little sheet that you could work on and take a look and see what your values are. So let's talk about ours just for a second then. So we chose to have the semi-raised split helm position on one side of the boat, but with a set of throttles on the other side. And for us, this just has a lot of different advantages. It's a very large social helm position area, great place to stand watches and have people come visit you and sit with you. And when we have to get to a lot of line handling and steering at the same time, there's split positions so two people can handle that. We like the semi-raise because it gives us a 360 degree view around the boat, but it doesn't raise the boom too much and that keeps performance going and allows you to access the boom. There's also a stairway that goes straight down into the cockpit so you don't have to go out on the side decks when you don't want to, but there's also a way out onto the side decks to get quick access forward or quick access to the stern. So for us, there's just a lot of things that are important to us about this particular helm position. Now, is it everything? No, there are things about it that we don't like as much, but there are so many positives. Oh, it can be fully enclosed, so it's completely protected from the elements, including not just sun and stuff, but uh, we have drop downs that can go all the way around, and so you're completely protected from all directions from, from any kind of weather. And yet you can raise those, flip up the window, and be out in the air in elements for you want that joy of sailing feeling with the wind coming out and it's a beautiful day and you don't want to be enclosed uh, inside. You can have that feeling that you're outside, although you'll still have the hard top up there protecting you from the sun, which, as Marianne mentioned, uh, that's actually very important to us. I've already had skin cancer. I <laughs> don't need it again. So we want to be protected from the sun all the time. Now, as far as adjusting the main and being able to see it, there's going to be a window in the hard top above the helm so, or the ha line handling ball that goes all the way. And so either one can look up and see the sail and have some, some view of uh, the telltales and such. So that, that works out for that as well. So it has a lot of things we like, and so that's why we chose to go with it. But as you may find out when you value your uh, positives here, you might like another helm position much better. And you know what? That's fine because there isn't one helm position for everybody. As far as we've seen, there's 19. Yeah. And so I've run into people who are 
absolutely convinced and positive and love, and they've had it, the one that would be the, the last on our list. So it, it just, it really is a case of it's just what you want. And there isn't a right one and there isn't a wrong one. For us, the one we like the most is that semi-raised split helm position. So that's what we designed into SV Lynx and that's what we'll have on our boat. Yep, and so when you do the spreadsheet, let us know in the comments what you value highly and what positions that you might prefer and let us know if we left anything out. We just love to see what uh, various people's opinions are about helm positions because again, this is just a touchy subject in some ways, <laughs> but it doesn't need to be. Just as you understand that, that what you prefer is best for you. And so uh, don't let anybody argue you out of that. Now, so we've made some progress this week. We're finishing up the bulkheads, we're finishing up the porthole, we're finishing up the forebeam because we're all in preparation now for the arrival of our laminating epoxy. And that arrives literally today. Yes. So uh, here's, a, here's a little view of it approaching Los Angeles. And so it's coming and we have to get all of those three things ready because the four beam uses a lamination on the outside of it. The bulkheads have a lamination of various uh, fiberglass uh, strips and stuff that go across to strengthen the bulkheads in places. And of course we have to coat the entire canoe with basalt. So all three of the things we've been working on all need lamination. And so we got to get them to the point where they're ready to put it on because it's just going to be a few days of it getting through customs and we're going to go pick it up. And then we want to get to work getting on that lamination. All right, well, excuse the noise. Brian is sanding, and you know what? He loves sanding. So um, while he sands, we'd like to thank our patrons, as always, and uh, also thank um, the ones who showed up for our latest Q&A session. So that went well, and uh, we had a very nice discussion about both our catamaran and some other features of catamarans that we wanted to go over. So uh, next week, we're going to be getting to sealing up this four beam, which is why we're standing here. We've got it uh, all prepped here to do our I-beam and such, and then we'll get the top on, and we'll get that all sealed up. And um, two days from now, our Sycamine has uh, reached the warehouse, so it's off the ship. Whew. And we're gonna go pick it up on Friday with um, Brian DeRuiter to help me out with his truck and uh, forklift and such. But it's gonna be really hot. Uh, for the next week or so. We're, we're talking 96 to 99 degrees Fahrenheit, distance Celsius. And uh, so once we get this sycamine early in the morning on Friday so that it's still cool, we'll put it into our garage and put it inside the air-conditioned enclosure so that uh, it doesn't spoil. Anyway, um, so that's it for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. We really do appreciate all of you viewing our videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. Right, so we'll see you next week in the heat. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Bye.